Hello everyone, Team of Game here, bringing you some more Modern Warfare 3 analysis. Now before I get cracking, there's just a little bit of housekeeping I have to do. First and foremost, I'm sorry I didn't upload a video yesterday, I was pretty ill. I sat down to do it and I just couldn't couldn't face it really, and I created a little bit of a video, but it was uh, pretty bad quality, so I knocked it on the head till today, I hope you don't mind too much. Secondly, I have changed what I was originally planning to do today, I'm no longer going to do a Modern Warfare 3 Tango Down analysis video. However, if you do want to see one of those, there are two of them linked in the description, one by Modern Warfare 2 Joe and one by WTF Productions. I sincerely recommend you go and check them both out and leave a comment in the description of that video saying Team M Gamer sent you or whatever if you did go and check it out. But finally, before I get cracking on the analysis, I have finally created an account for you guys to add me. It's called Team M Gamer, just the same as my YouTube account. I only created it yesterday, so I'm still level one on cards. I have done a little bit of an ultimate team overnight, but it really is a brand new account, so if you guys want to play me at anything, just add that account, and I will happily add you. So, that's the end of the housekeeping. I hope you enjoy what's coming up, because I think there's some pretty interesting gameplay coming up for you guys, so enjoy the video. Okay, the first bit of gameplay I'm going to bring you today is some kill confirm gameplay. Now, this is one of two new game modes announced to Call of Duty XP, but it is the only one that got shown so th i think another one was called team capture or something like that which is very similar to vip in halo but we're not going to talk about that because there's no footage today this gameplay is very similar to tdm but instead of just getting points for kills you actually have to physically run over the body of the person you killed to pick up their dog tags so there's absolutely no point sitting in the back of the map with a sniper being a douchebag on this game mode. You've really got to run around, and this guy does it quite well. He's using a USAS-12 shotgun, which is, I think, a brand new weapon to the Call of Duty series. I don't remember that being in any of the past uh, past games. And it's quite an interesting gameplay to see how this game mode plays out. So let's let's get straight into it. Now, as we pick up the gameplay here, we see the guy we are following has Juiced, which is a new death streak introduced to Modern Warfare 3. I think this one is taking the place of Painkiller, which, as most of us accept, was a terrible, terrible thing in practice. But probably a good idea, you know, spawn trapping is not fun when you're in it. So, this kill streak, this death streak, sorry, gives you that little bit of extra speed to try and escape the spawn trap if you're in one. So, I think that's quite a good idea in the whole death streak scheme of things. Now, a little bit on the map. I'm not quite sure what this map is called. It didn't uh, give us a name with the gameplay. However, this reminds me so, so much of Jungle. It's quite a large map. You know, so this guy's doing a lot of running around with his shotgun. But it does remind me almost identically of Jungle. There's a village on one side. There's a riverbed running through. There's high ground. There's places to camp. So... It's a little bit different to what Robert Bowling told us we to expect from Modern Warfare 3 maps. He said they were going to be less verticality, a lot smaller, but, you know, variety is the spice of life. If every single map was exactly the same, small, cramped, no places to hide, it would get boring very, very quickly. So I'm actually quite pleased that 402 and Infinity Ward have introduced some slightly larger maps. Now, just a little bit on the gameplay. As you can see, it really does benefit people who run around. There's absolutely no point just stopping in one place camping because you will lose the game that way. So it's a fantastic idea for a new game mode, and I'm really, really looking forward to playing this. Right, let's head on to the next clip. Now, this second bit of gameplay is domination on a map called Arcaden or Arcaden. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. And the guy is using a G36C, I think. As you can notice from that gunfight there, the recoil of these weapons really has been increased from Modern Warfare 2. And I think that's a good thing. Weapons like the ACR or the M4 Carbine really were overpowered over long range in Modern Warfare 2. Most of the time, they could outshoot sniper rifles, and that really wasn't, uh, wasn't particularly fair. So... I'm quite pleased to see that the weapon recoil has been increased. However, that is not the most important part of this video. As you can see in the top right-hand corner, the directional UAV is up. Now, I'm very, very, almost certain that directional UAV is the replacement for the Blackbird. And if you keep an eye on the minimap, you can see the red triangles showing you what direction the enemy are facing in. However, it is a little bit different from the Black Ops Blackbird. In Black Ops... The Blackbird was up constantly, so you could see every little twitch of that guy moving. However, it seems to be, in Modern Warfare 3, that the directional UAV is simply a pulse going around the map. So it's not a constant um, thing like it was in Black Ops. It's a pulse. So that means while it will still be fantastic for spotting campers and people in corners, if someone is running around being aggressive, the directional UAV isn't quite as good for picking their position. I think that's a nice balance that perhaps the Blackbird didn't achieve. So let's move on to the next clip. 
Now this third and final bit of gameplay I'm going to be analysing today is possibly the most interesting of them all and you'll see the reasons why in a little bit. However, just to get us going, the guy we are following is using an M16 with a hybrid scope. Now the hybrid scope offers a host of tactical opportunities that weren't available to us before. Like this guy who's got here, he's using I think the new style ACOG scope and a red dot sight giving him close range uh, ability and the ability to pick targets off from long range so it just offers a lot more choice for the uh, for the gamer and you can see him switch between the two as we go along however perhaps the most interesting bit is the map the map is the london map we saw in the uh, modern warfare 3 reveal trailer the cinematic reveal trailer and it does look very very good the graphics look clean it looks nice and bright apart from when you go inside like this it's a bit grimy and what is that Come on, Infinity Ward. You said you were going to get rid of Panic Knifing. 402 has tweeted loads of times that we're going to, you said you were going to get rid of Panic Knifing. And for me to see that, it's really, really disappointing. I mean, I know there's plenty of time left for release. And I know a lot of people who came back from Call of Duty XP said the knifing seems similar to uh, World at War style knifing. But even in World at War, it just wasn't, wasn't good enough. I mean, the knifing is the Achilles heel of, of uh, Call of Duty games, in my opinion. Because there's no more annoying way to die than to be winning a gunfight and then have one guy mash one button to win the gunfight. And I sincerely hope Infinity War change that before release. However, I am going to give them a stay of execution on that one because the rest of the gameplay clips, the rest of the trailers that they have released, have looked very, very interesting. I mean, a lot of people have said, oh, it looks so similar to Modern Warfare 2, but is that necessarily a bad thing? 90% of Modern Warfare 2 was pretty much perfect. You know, it was just the one-man army noob tubes, the commando lunging, you know, the little bits of BS that ruined that game. So if Infinity Ward kick out all that BS, you know, hone all the rest of it, they'll have a fantastic game. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that it's like Modern Warfare 2. But anyway, that's my analysis winding to a close. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. It's a little bit different to what I was originally planning, but I thought a little bit more informal analysis would get you, you know, more opportunity to watch the flow of the gameplay instead of chopping and changing. I wanted you to see how the game played instead of me pausing the video every 10 seconds to point out something interesting. So I hope you enjoyed this style of analysis. If you did, please rate and comment as always, and I'll bring you another one either tomorrow or Saturday. So have a nice day, guys, and thanks for watching.